Okay, I think we should get started. We'll turn it into a to an, a staff meeting um, in essence. No decisions will be made today and we'll just be doing the updates. Um, those, the, those in attendance will still be able to ask questions of, of those presenting, but no decisions will be made um, today. And I looks, it looks, and then looking at the agenda, it, looks, it doesn't look as though any decisions are being asked for, um, mm -hmm. but we will, so we're, this, this turns into a, basically a staff meeting update of the, the various things on the agenda. I think that's, I believe that's how Raisa has, um, we've done this, we've had the, to do this in the past, and I think that's how it's handled. We can still go forward with the meeting as long as there are no decisions being made. Great, thank you. That's sure. Good. So I guess we would um, actually, I think we can still deal with public comment. Um, I'll call this, this, Rice, is that how we deal with this? We, to, we, yes, since we don't have a quorum, yes. so we turn it into a staff update? That's correct. Okay, can I still take public comment? Yes. Okay, excellent. So let's, um, I'll, I'll call this, this um, update to order, <laughs> to order <laughs> and um, ask for anyone wishing to make a, a uh, anyone in the public wishing to make a comment on those items not on the agenda. We have no raised hands at this time for public comment, nor do we have any emails or voicemails. Okay, excellent. So we'll just move on to um, the update starting with Railroad Square Association Community Benefit District. Raphael. Well, good morning. How are you? <laughs> well, it's good to see you. Uh, good to see you too. Um, I think uh, that one is... Uh, Chris Wilson's item, but uh, I will go ahead and report that uh, things continue to move very well in the rural square area. And uh, most recently we had um, our team uh, from TPW over at the depot park to address some of the electrical concerns. Uh, there is hope uh, that uh, some of the minor repairs are completed uh, within the next couple of weeks. And then uh, the association will seek out a contractor that will um, assess uh, what is needed to be done to decorate uh, some of the streets so that there can be some um, lighting in December um, as part of the uh, holiday festivities. And I'm hoping Chris is on the call. Uh, Chris? Yes. Oh, yeah. okay. So I'll turn it over to Chris for some additional details. Great. Excellent. Hello, Chris. Good morning. Good morning. Thank you, Raphael. Um, yeah, just to start with, um, you know, we still have, we have some issues. I always have to start with that so I can end on a positive note. Um, there is, we're watching the encampment that's over near the AC hotel. That's a concern. Um, hoping to get that cleaned up and our security is watching that. Um, we're, just to tell you, there is concern from our merchants are watching, going to be watching closely with the temporary move of of Catholic Charities moving into St. Vincent de Paul's location, we, you know, going to be watching that because there's concern with the merchants that, you know, it's going to lead to lines of people hanging out on Wilson Street and in that area, and it could impact some of the businesses down there. So um, just, you know, being aware of that. Um, we're really focusing, as Raphael said, you know, we're, we're focusing now on really what projects can we actually complete before the end of the year? There's a lot of balls in the air and, and really wanna focus on getting some things completed. It's really important now that we're um, showing something to our property owners that's visual, that they can see an impact of the assessment fees that they're now paying to support our district. So um, looking at the tree trimming, we um, had to scale back our original plan of really going in and removing trees because as I've mentioned before, the concrete issues and the expense of that. So we are going ahead with trimming trees on 4th Street. We'll be looking, removing any hazardous trees on the um, 3rd Street and 5th Street and, the, and cleaning up the area looking forward to the city getting um, the depot park trees done, which we've been promised that they will be done by um, October, by the end of October. So clean that up so that we can move ahead and get some lighting down there for the holidays. So the trimming's gotta be done. Um, I had 
um, hoping Cadence will share the contractor she used for the downtown for their um, uh, lighting that they've got down there. We'd like to do something similar. Um, the wayfinding project um, is another one we hope to move forward. I think we're now looking at, you know, working on the permitting through the city and getting that, getting that project moved forward. It's kind of been a, a long time project. Um, we are, um, we had our first music stroll last month and we're having our second, probably last one of this year of this type of our end of summer music stroll on Sunday. September 26th, um, the Humane Society is going to be out there with uh, showing their services. We've got a number of musicians that will be playing. We've got a, a group playing in Depot Park. So it's a variety of music and um, um, with the uh, Humane Society out there and a bubble lady. So it should be fun, casual afternoon for, for families to come down in a safe outdoor environment. Um, wanted to give a shout out to, to Claire Nordy and Deb Lane, who helped us with our last, our first and the previous music stroll, who brought the water efficiency program out there for us and had a, had a display and booth. So that, that was uh, really helpful. And they also brought a musician for us. Um, we're working on holiday planning as we move into um, our fall and and holiday advertising opportunities, marketing, hoping to bring the carriage rides back this year. That was always very, very popular and a, and a great thing for our community. So we're bringing, hoping to bring that back as long as we can, uh, barring any COVID restrictions. Um, I really wanna thank Eileen, Cleary and Raphael for for working us through the whole tax assessment, uh, property assessment fees. Um, it's been a laborious task, uh, really helping us identify those delinquent ones as we now transition, those are being transitioned to the county. And uh, a lot of time has been spent on it and, I, and we really, really do appreciate it. So um, I think that is really it for me. Um, if you've been down there, all the bollards have been painted. So they all look nice and shiny. We're, um, you know, little things do make a difference. And uh, so we're hoping to also get the light poles done. So we're working with the city to look at options for those, whether they're painted partway up or all the way or how much expense we're gonna do with those. So still focusing on, you know, getting the area to look nice, feel safe and be very vigilant about the um, the transient issues and the vandalism that the gra graffiti and vandalism that does continue to plague us down there. Yeah. So I think that's it. Eric, Raphael, did I miss anything? No, oh, no, that you covered it pretty well. Uh, and again, this is an evolving project uh, with a lot of moving parts. So I appreciate not just the association, but the city staff for really stepping up to the plate to bring beauty to this area. Thanks to the Community Benefit District, of course, uh, this has made a tremendous impact. Uh, you know, when I made my city council presentation, I said that this was the gateway to, San, to Santa Rosa, and, and it is so. So we want to continue moving forward, working hard, and making this uh, a destination for Santa Rosa, in addition, of course, to our other side of the downtown area. So uh, kudos to the uh, association, and let's continue working together. I do have a question, um, and thanks for the report, Chris and Raphael. Um, I'm sure this has been um, discussed in the past. When I'm curious about the lighting, uh, the, uh, the the aesthetic lighting, at one point, I don't know if it was in place or if it was being discussed, that instead of lighting trees or maybe in addition to, that the outside frame of the buildings be lit, um, at least, uh, above where someone could actually reach the lights um, with LEDs and with the new light bulbs that are LEDs. And because they, they last forever almost, there would be very little light, very light, very little light bulb replacement. Plus it, would, it creates kind of a cool look when you look down a street and all the outside frames of the buildings are lit. Um, has that been discussed and are there, are there reasons why that has not been pursued or it was just something that they just didn't wanna do? They wanted to put the lights in the trees. What's the, what is the um, kind of the status of that or why, what was or was not considered? 
Um, I can only just say from, from the time I've been there, a few of some of the buildings on 4th Street are lit from the top. Um, mm -hmm. It's not totally consistent. Mm -hmm. uh, and we'd like to, like to get more of that. What we're looking at is wrapping the, there, there's old existing lights that are not working that are in Depot Park. We want to end, there are some on Forest Street that were within the trees. We're getting, trying to get those all removed and do tree wrapping in Depot okay. Park. And then on Forest Street, we'd like to do the over the, we really like to do overhead across the street to like mm. to give a feeling of entering into or highlighting that street. Um, I'd love to see the buildings outlined or it being more consistent. Raphael, do you have more on that? Yeah, my, to my recollection, we did address this about three years ago and our uh, planning division is open to the idea and um, providing um, that encroachment permit for such project. I believe uh, it's, it stopped uh, with um, um, us trying to assess uh, and the association, of course, trying to assess the cost of uh, purchasing these lights. However, uh, we are opening, we, we are open to having these discussions and uh, the possibility of uh, doing the install, uh, of allowing the installation of these lights. Uh, yeah. So I think this is a project that Mike uh, uh, has had in mind for, for quite a while. I think it would definitely add um, uh, uh, more beautification to the area, uh, make it more festive, and um, we can definitely revisit uh, this topic with the association. Yeah. Well, it's, you know, I, I've seen the, the overhead lighting is, is a, is a cool idea as well. I like that. I mean, it's, 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 um, the beauty of the new, the new lights is they are, um, they're, they're nice and bright. Um, they don't require a lot of maintenance. I, I would think fire would, might, might have a problem. Um, they, they don't generally like anymore. They didn't used to, didn't used to matter, but it does now. Having things strung across the streets, I guess because of their ladder trucks, et cetera, um, that can that that could be a problem. But any anything to do with those lights, whether they be outlining the buildings or 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 if we can get them across the street, that would be. It, it just makes a real festive feel, and it also creates a fair amount of light. Yes. Uh, two things, um, Council Member. Uh, sorry, one, Chair Tibbetts is on now. And, yes, I did notice that. Thank you. Uh, Cadence Hinkle can actually, uh, uh, Allenson can give an update on that as well. Okay, outstanding. Uh, Cadence, do you want to do you want to say something now? Yeah, I'm happy to to speak now or um, kind of update when I get to my report, which I believe is next on the agenda. Yeah, that, that now, have... that'll be fine. Welcome, Chair Tibbetts. Thank you, John. Sorry I'm late. Um, I no don't problem. know what's going on with my camera either. Uh, I'm trying to get it to work, but for now, this will have to do. Okay. Well, we'll what we'll, we'll do now is if you could bring the um, the official meeting to order. We we were we were at a staff meeting update uh, until you until you came on. So, um, if you could bring the official. Uh, downtown subcommittee to order, then we can continue in a, in a um, standard fashion. Sounds good. Okay, it's 8.48 a.m. I'll call this meeting of this September 7th meeting of the downtown act, downtown subcommittee to order. Uh, and that's at 8.48 a.m. Um, and then we'll move on to uh, number one. Uh, Madam Clerk, can you please take the roll? Uh, yes, um, Chair Tibbetts? Here. Member Sawyer? Here. Thank you. Um, let the record reflect that uh, Member Fleming is unable to attend today. Okay, thank you. Let's move on to item two, public comments by members of the public. Uh, any person in the public wishing to address this subcommittee may do so at this time by using the raise hand feature on Zoom or pressing star nine if you're calling in by phone. Uh, Madam Clerk, do we have anybody wishing to speak? We have no raised hands at this time, nor do we have any voicemails or emails for this meeting. Okay, great. We'll move on to item three, new business. Uh, uh, item 3.1, we have the Railroad Square Association Community Benefit District update uh, by Rafael Rivero, Economic Development Specialist, Chris Wilson, 
Yep. Pardon me, uh, Chair Tibbetts. Uh, we do have a member of the public wishing to speak. Um, they just raised their hand. Um, if we could take a moment for that. Sure, we'll go back to item two. Thank you. Um, just one moment while I pull up um, allow them to the public comment screen. Just and in the meantime, um, council member, we did um, cover 3.1. We'll, we'll, uh, I don't think there's any reason to redo that one. We can, we'll, we'll, we can, after we're finished with the public comment, we can move to 3.2. Okay, thanks, John. You bet. Um, and Denise, if you would please unmute um, and confirm that you are able to see the screen, that would be wonderful. Hi, everybody. Morning. Uh, I can see the screen. Thank you. Um, I just wanted to do, do a quick comment, and I wasn't sure if this was the right place to do it, but I'm about ready to head into my work life, so I, I want to get it in. Um, so I pulled the calls for service for our neighborhood, the St. Rose neighborhood, really small neighborhood um, in downtown Santa Rosa, uh, calls for service for the uh, January through August of this year. Uh, is a sort of an astounding 500, over 500 calls for service. And specifically 57% uh, and possibly more if they're not marked correctly as, as uh, addressing homeless situations and issues, 57% of those. So a call a day for the last eight months in our neighborhood has been regarding the homeless. Uh, and I know that we have been told in the past, and I'm not sure if the police are uh, going to do report or not on this meeting, the downtown police patrol, that if we called in you know, repeatedly, we would get a, a dedicated uh, patrols through our neighborhood. And I don't believe that that has happened yet. And I just wanted to put it out there that we'd love to see that happen. We realize the in response team is going to be launched shortly, but in the meantime, uh, clearly, there's a, a heavy um, presence and and challenges with the uh, with the homeless issue in our neighborhood has there as there has been for a long time and and we're ready for that to change. So if uh, that could be addressed later on, if there is going to be um, an agenda item on the downtown police patrols, we would really appreciate it. Thanks, Denise. Yeah, thank you, Denise. We'll um, ask the public safety representatives to address that question when it comes up. All right, was there any other public comment at this time? There is no additional public comment at this time. Thank you. Okay, let's fast forward to item 3.2 on the agenda. Uh, that is gonna be Downtown Action Organization with Cadence Hinkle Allenson. Thank you, Chair Tibbetts. Good morning, Councilmember Sawyer and staff. Nice to see everybody today. Um, I'm happy to give a, kind of give an update on the lighting situation since we've worked through most of the um, scenarios that came up in the in the uh, earlier item. Uh, but first, I just want to start by kind of saying our thank yous because it's been another um, another great month of working with the city. We've had a lot of challenges this past month, and uh, our our city partners just continue to be um, responsive and helpful and solution oriented, which we really, really appreciate, um, especially the DET, um, we, who we're just incredibly grateful for. We've had a number of um, ongoing issues that seem to be kind of slowly escalating and are becoming more and more of a concern. Um, and we really appreciate them um, paying attention to those and trying to help us address them. Uh, we, we have a lot of upset business owners right now about um, issues that are that are coming forward, mostly to deal with our homeless population downtown. Had uh, a number of break-ins and uh, a lot of trespassing, and uh, the the kind of general state just seems seems to be escalating a bit. And so the DET has been has been very helpful um, as we're trying to work through kind of the best way to. Uh, support that community and our business owners at the same time. Uh, I think I'll, I'll start with kind of some updates on businesses downtown. We have two new retailers in the process of opening, which we're really excited about. Um, 
both are hoping to open this fall. So as soon as we have firm dates on those, I'll, I'll definitely share. Um, we, let me see if there's, I, I have heard from a number of, of property owners that um, the ongoing issues downtown, specifically the homeless issues have been keeping potential tenants from moving in. I think that is more specific to office tenants right now. Um, but we obviously do have a number of uh, vacancies along 4th Street and in the kind of downtown core right there. Um, but again, working hard with, especially with DET to try to figure out how to kind of make some positive changes in that area. Uh, I'll, I'll move on to some of the committee work right now. So our, our design and improvement committee has been working on a lighting concept um, and we actually just installed bridge lighting across uh, 4th Street at the intersection of uh, 4th and B. Um, thinking about doing it in other locations, but wanted to install it there prior to moving forward. So if you haven't seen that yet, um, definitely worth checking out. We worked with Gabe to make sure that was high enough and um, provided drawings to the fire department to make sure they were comfortable with it as well. Um, and we used the redwoods there kind of as the, the infrastructure to span over the street. We previously have looked at both parapet lighting, so outlining the, um, the buildings themselves, as well as uh, trying to cross the full, the, the entire span uh, from building to building. Uh, that was very challenging because the building heights vary significantly um, and the build it, building materials vary significantly. So that the types of, <clears throat> Uh, attachments would change per building. The height wouldn't necessarily be able to stay the same, which is why we ended up using the redwoods to do the over the street lighting. Um, for the parapet lighting, it was kind of a similar challenge. We're not, uh, we're not not moving forward with it yet. It just proved to be a little bit, um, a little bit too complicated to do right now, uh, which is that in order to do that, we need, uh, individual power sources for each building. So every single property owner would need to weigh in. We need, uh, and, and to, get, to get quotes for it, it would be different for every single property. So it'd be hard for us to budget. Um, we'd need to have a lot of buy-in from the property owners for us to move forward because we'd have the individual power. And again, then the, the attachments onto the building would differ depending on the material or the construction of the actual building itself uh, would would be a lot easier because we wouldn't we wouldn't necessarily have to work with the fire departments it's not in the way of anything um, but more challenges in that we'd have to work with each individual property owner um, to get their buy-in and get a very very comprehensive quote for um, what would essentially be a different installation for every building on fourth street so that's why we haven't moved forward with it. It is something we are definitely still interested in doing, um, but we are focusing on the on the bridge lighting for now. And if and if we're happy with what went in at, at the intersection of B and Fourth, we'll look to do more um, down Fourth Street and possibly in other areas of downtown as well. So uh, that's been the main focus of our design and improvement committee. We um, our community engagement committee has been really really busy. Our um, open and out schedule comes to an end next weekend. We have our end of summer block party um, on the 18th. I think we have six or seven different musical performances. We've got um, a number of different kids activities and, and games and, and um, things for families, magician, balloon artist, arts and crafts, uh, different booths from community organizations. Um, some, we, we got some fun, uh, kind of games for Courthouse Square that we'll bring out um, hopefully more regularly, but a giant, a giant uh, Connect Four set and some building blocks that we can put out on the weekends, but we'll start doing that at the block party. Uh, and then we've got a, a craft fair coming in. So the Maker's Market Artisan Craft Fair is gonna be on the square. And we have a beer garden with all of our downtown breweries. And then we're really working with our retailers and restaurants to offer specials and sidewalk sales and um, make all of 4th Street and Courthouse Square really feel like 
the full event rather than it being just on Courthouse Square. So the block will be closed from B to, um, to D. Uh, and then the little section of Mendocino from fifth to fourth will also be closed as will the whole square. So it'll be very pedestrian friendly. People can you know, walk from space to space, activity to activity and feel um, pretty comfortable out there. We're also moving forward with our fall fun fest on Friday, October 29th. We're gonna start with uh, trick or treating in the businesses along 4th Street. Uh, our friends at Bayside Church are bringing a bunch of carnival games that will spread throughout the street. We're gonna do a, um, a costume contest partnering with the local radio station on that. So we'll have a DJ on the square and uh, hopefully a little you know, red, red or orange carpet costume contest for, for kids and families and uh, pets. <clears throat> and then looking to do a couple other activities um, and have a family movie night at seven. So we'll have a big LED screen, which is a bit of a shift. We were using the blow up screen previously, but we're gonna be using an LED screen so it should be brighter. Um, and uh, it'll be dark by seven in October, but <clears throat> it'll be fun to have that really um, exciting new screen in the square. And we're gonna be showing Hocus Pocus at seven o'clock um, on that Friday, October, uh, October 29th. So that'll just be kind of a fun family afternoon downtown. We don't have any street closures planned for that. Um, although we'll, we're not, we're not planning to close the street, but we will, we do want everyone to safely be able to walk from uh, across the sidewalk. So we'll probably have our street plus team uh, kind of really focusing on the trick or treating areas and making sure everyone is safe. Um, and then finally, because this is probably the, thing I get the most questions on, other than the closure of the 500 block, is the ice rink. Um, we are moving forward with a synthetic ice rink. It is um, scheduled to be installed in, in mid-November and will likely run from November 19th through January 9th. Um, we're working with some of our, uh, some of the markets we've worked with over the summer um, to have some holiday markets throughout that time as well. We are using volunteers to uh, to staff the rink over the course of the um, over the course of the season, and then we'll still have our winter lights um, tree lighting event on the 26th, which is the day after Thanksgiving. So we're really trying to kind of make it a fun, uh, fun festive courthouse square um, over the holidays, and are excited to kind of share more about that. Maybe I can. Um, just give more details about it so that everyone is up to speed at the next meeting. We're working through some of the logistical things right now and we'll be obviously meeting with city staff to talk through that as well. Um, but I can probably give a pretty thorough overview at our October meeting, just in case there are any questions about timing or tickets or any of those things. Um, and then finally, our Street Plus team has lost a couple staff, staff members recently um, in the process of hiring and hoping to get them back up to five. Um, but the three who are still with us, uh, Steve, Sonny, and Danielle, are working very hard. Um, so we're grateful for their, uh, their support downtown. They've, they've had a lot to do, and they've um, done a great job doing it. So hoping to get two more staff on board um, in the next couple of weeks so that they can uh, really keep go back to some of their more proactive activities and, and not just be reactive to um, the various issues that come up. So. It's been a challenge for them, but again, they've been they've been great, kind of pushing through that. So, uh, hoping we can get them the support soon. I think that's that's it for me, unless anyone has any questions. Member Sawyer, thank you, Jack. Um, uh, I do have a well a comment and a question. Um, Caden said, it, it, "When it's when it is supported by the merchants and when it's possible to do, it certainly makes it easier to close off." Mendocino Avenue um, now that it's not going through the middle of the square. So it's it's nice to be able to have that that flexibility when, when you can take advantage of it. It's, that's, that's a good thing. It kind of makes some cohesion um, when trying to do an event. So I'm happy to see that. My, my sorry, the next, the question I have is probably gonna move to um, uh, Sergeant Wolf, but it sounds like when you mentioned break-ins, it sounds like this has moved from a nuisance to a much more serious 
and arrestable um, situation. Is it, are we not, are, are the perpetrators, do they disappear before we can uh, get to them if they're actually breaking into a building? I mean, that sounds like a felony to me. Um, so I'm curious, and it'll probably just move to, to, to Jonathan um, about how that's being dealt with. But um, that's, it just sounds like it's, it has some of, this, some of these, this activity or behavior has escalated uh, regardless of the reality of zero bail um, and just the, the, the revolving door but um, I, I would like uh, to hear the, um, the reality of how we deal with break-ins. I, I will point out that this is not necessarily, this does not feel um, like an escalation in any way. Um, we have had pretty regular break-ins downtown over the last um, six months or so. The, the ones mm. that I'm specifically thinking about that happened in the last week are vacant buildings, which mm. is, you know, an, an additional issue because they're not monitored. Uh, they don't have security on site or security cameras. Um, and it, it is harder to uh, address that when yeah. there's, uh, there's no one there. Although most of our property owners do have no trespass letters on file and DET is great about enforcing that. Okay, thank you. That's sad to hear, I'm sorry. Okay, seeing no other questions, let's go to public comment on item 3.2. Are there any members of the public wishing to speak? We have no raised hands at this time. Okay, uh, seeing none, we'll bring it back for any final comments. Uh, Council Member Sawyer, any final comments? No, thanks, Jack. Okay, um, thank you, Cadence. We'll move now move on to item 3.3, public safety update with Sergeant Jonathan Wolf. Um, good morning, uh, Chair Tippett. Um, Sergeant Barrett will be providing the update this morning. Okay, sounds good. Good morning, everybody. Good, good morning. morning. I'll be filling in for Sergeant Wolf for the foreseeable future, so you'll probably be seeing me once a month from now on. Um, so the focus of the, the downtown enforcement team has been uh, continued re-emphasis of the downtown corridor. Uh, specifically, they've been focusing on Old Courthouse Square and the Comstock Mall area with municipal codes uh, for things like smoking in public or public consumption of alcohol. Uh, we continue to address the trespassing issues throughout downtown. Um, as Caden said, most of the businesses downtown have uh, trespass letters on file and that's uh, a regular every morning thing that we try to enforce. Um, the primary uh, criminal charge for downtown over the month of August was theft of vehicle actually, which is um, different from this time last year. Uh, as far as the, the St. Rose area, that is part of our daily routine of uh, emphasis of trying to get through all of the downtown neighborhoods. Um, just for context, this team has been tasked with uh, the homeless encampments throughout the city for the last uh, four or five years and splitting time with downtown. And just recently, uh, we have re-emphasized downtown and have um, recommitted to downtown. So there should be uh, more presence um, moving forward. And to that end, we've been working hard on getting uh, the electric motorcycles, the zeros back online. We have two currently working. We're trying to get back up to four uh, to help our ability to be seen downtown and throughout all the neighborhoods downtown. Uh, we've been working with the DAO to, with their habitually homeless issues they have downtown. Uh, we've coordinated with Hope and we've worked on getting uh, some people um, kind of wrapped in services through hope and all that kind of stuff. And then uh, finally to address the break-in issues, uh, like Caden said, those are typically happening overnight uh, and in businesses that don't have cameras. So if we're able to get them on camera and able to identify them, then we're able to do follow-up. But typically it's not like they're breaking and in entering where there's a burglary involved. It's just a, a pure break-in vandalism type thing. And the person's gone by the time uh, we discover that the, the business has been broken into. Uh, that's all I have unless there are questions. Councilmember Sawyer, do you have any questions for Sergeant Barrett? You know, I, I, not really a question, it's just a comment, um, potentially. I guess there's a question embedded in there is, you know, those buildings that are um, uh, vacant, is there, for public safety sake, is there, I'm wondering if there's any kind of program we might want to put into place that actually puts eyes 
on the vacant buildings. Um, and I'm just as a, I don't know how it would be done. I mean, we have eyes on Courthouse Square. I think that there are other eyes around downtown. Um, if we, depending on how many vacant buildings there are on 4th Street, uh, I'm, I'm wondering if, if we couldn't incorporate um, some of these uh, blind spots, if you will, into our visual program. And it's just, it's I'm just throwing it out there. I don't know if it's something that we could even, well, if it's a public space, like the sidewalk, um, as opposed to someone's building, I don't, I don't want to suggest that we should be taking responsibility for the security of, of, of landlords that have empty buildings. We might want to, um, but, but if we were able to, to kind of assist in that way, um, it would aid in our ability potentially of um, kind of getting some of these individuals that are, that are doing the vandalism um, tracking it or looking at them, identifying them, and then and then which could lead to an arrest. I know the police have plenty on their on their plates as far as dealing with this kind of behavior. But um, I'm just wondering what what options there might be with our own program, our own uh, security program downtown, uh, where we do have eyes on the street. So I'm just throwing it out there. It's 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 disturbing to me that we have this kind of behavior going on and whether or not there's any really any solution that we can assist in um, is a big unknown. So I'm just throwing it out there. Uh, I'm, I am certainly no uh, subject matter expert on cameras. I can say that based off of the results we've had in uh, Old Courthouse Square in the transit mall throughout the, the parking garages, they, they have been extremely effective in getting people identified and getting prosecution. Um, so that is certainly an option. Um, making that happen, obviously, is is a whole different conversation, but it certainly yeah. would be an effect. Um, we have elevated uh, our director of uh, information technology, Eric McHenry, uh, and he might be able to weigh in as well. So I just want to note that he's available for uh, questions on this as well. Excellent. Thanks, Raisa. Eric, right. any, can we have, through the mayor, can, can we have Eric... Um, weigh in on what the potential is for additional um, eyes on 4th Street? And that is a, um, a, a uh, item on the agenda as well. So we yeah, can I was wondering if we should... Oh, there it is. So that comes up and... Yeah, that's fine. I, I, I didn't know... I, I, I really... I didn't notice the video surveillance piece on that. So I'll just, I'll just wait. That's fine. Thanks, Raisa. And thanks, Eric. All right, thanks, John. Um, I have a question for you, Sergeant, and uh, Denise Hill, she asked it earlier, and I see that she's still on, and I'm probably going to butcher her question, so if I do, Denise, I hope that you'll uh, uh, talk to us again during public comment on this section. Um, but uh, Sergeant, she had a, a question about the uptick in calls for service in the St. Rose neighborhood. She had a statistic where 57% are related to people experiencing homelessness. Um, can you speak to that a little bit? Are you noticing a, an, an increase uh, in homelessness activity? Uh, I will say that St. Rose has for a long time been a, a neighborhood of emphasis for us that we spend a lot of time in. Uh, we also are, are reactive to where specific crimes are. So like based on the statistics over the last month, the primary areas where we're seeing the most criminal activity are actually on uh, 7th Street and the Comstock Mall area. Um, that being said, we do have at least... Uh, two teams throughout the week that do spend regular time in the St. Rose area and our weekend team uh, spends their time there as well. So it is a place that we go as far as homeless complaints versus crime. I'll be seeing a lot of complaints there, but not necessarily specific crimes related to homelessness, if that makes sense. Okay, that does. Thank you very much. Um, let's go to public comment at this time. Uh, Madam Clerk, do we have anybody wishing to speak? We do. Denise has raised her hand. Denise, um, if you would please unmute and confirm your ability to see the timer on the screen, that would be wonderful. Hi again. Yes, I can see it. Um, uh, yeah, it's. I just want to elaborate. So this is a quality of life issue for our residents. We've had a number of residents literally move out of the neighborhood this summer because of the impact of the homeless situation, the transients. 
and uh, you know what it what it takes to to constantly walk out your front door and be able to and look down the street and see you can't turn right because there's someone who's having a mental break uh, on that corner of the street. So you have to turn left to go where you want to go. You can't walk down Morgan Street because there's a, a lot of sketchy characters hanging out on Morgan Street. You can't go under Ninth Street, although it's been vastly improved. And I really appreciate uh, Sergeant Wolf in the in the Public Works Department working on uh, you know no parking on Ninth Street under the undercrossing. We could use a camera there for sure. Um, but uh, you know, it's it really is a, a quality of life issue, and and I, it is really depressing to see neighbors we've known for years make the decision to move out of the neighborhood because they just can't do it anymore. We can't call every day about something going on, and uh, you know, we've got young children in the neighborhood. So what are they seeing when so, you know somebody is acting erratic? or using the outdoors for a bathroom. And I know these are all issues you've heard before, but it is so endemic in our neighborhood that it's gotten to be a serious, serious issue. So I appreciate any uh, focus that can be given on the area. Uh, we currently have people camping right across from the uh, Catholic Charities property, right next to 700 Morgan Street, the, the uh, one neighbor who lives right there. He is incredibly challenged right now with waking up to fights in the middle of the night uh, having people, uh, you know, verbally assault him as he's going in and out of his house. You, so it, it's less than, you know, you can't put your finger on it's a specific crime, but what you can put your finger on is, you know, the, you know, not only the homeless population and we, and we hope the best for them and, and are thrilled that there's going to be some mental health facility expansion, but you know, it's it's really what what should you know the other population, the residents in the neighborhood, be re, uh, required or expected to put up with every day? And I think it's just the the focus needs to be you know now start to be a little bit uh, more focused on the, the neighborhood because people are leaving because of this situation, um, and it's you know that's an untenable situation for a neighborhood. You know, you can't have people who have been here for 20 years make that decision that they're moving just to this to the JC neighborhood because the JC neighborhood is actually a better living situation than our neighborhood. Really sad to see because we love our neighborhood. So I just wanted to put that out there. Thank you. Madam Clerk, are there any other raised hands at this time? There are no additional raised hands at this time. Okay, thank you. I'll bring it back. Uh, Council Member Sawyer, do you have any final comments or questions? No, I think probably my questions will be answered um, from Mr. McHenry in the next item. So th thank you, Mr. Chair. Okay, great. Well, we're gonna wrap it up and thank you, Sergeant Barrett. We're gonna move on to item 3.4, video surveillance of public areas, an overview by Eric McHenry, Chief Information Officer of Informa and Information Technology with uh, Rafael Rivero, Economic Development Specialist. Yeah, and quickly, uh, Chair Tibes, I was just quickly going to introduce uh, Eric. So, uh, but um, I also <laughs> wanted to point out that this has been a hot topic uh, over the course of the last several meetings. And you had requested for us to do a little research and uh, find if uh, a policy existed for uh, video surveillance, video surveillance and such, or if uh, actually a program. Uh, so we invited uh, Eric, our chief uh, information officer under information technology. Um, he has some background about some efforts that were conducted quite a few years ago under video surveillance. I understand there's a uh, some controversies and such, uh, cost, uh, constitutional uh, rights and such. Uh, but we, uh, it, it turns out that we may not have a policy in place. So I'm gonna turn it over to Eric and thank you, Eric, for being on the call. And I appreciate uh, your time and uh, information. So thank you. Yeah, sure. First, I'd like to give an overview of what cameras we have around town in general. Uh, we have a number of cameras inside buildings. And so those are in the category of non-public areas. I would say that the vast majority of our city facilities have interior cameras. I won't speak to those because I understand the interest here is more on the external cameras in the public right away or public view. Uh, the cameras are placed 
generally when there's a specific request by a department and those are identified based on need from the department. So for example, the parking garages have had cameras in them for over 15 years. And they are in various places in all of the parking garages. Uh, they are accessible through the parking department staff. Uh, none are available for the public to look at. Um, they are used in the parking garages for generally after the fact uh, understanding of what happened um, for an incident in the garages. Uh, in general, for our city uh, surveillance cameras, uh, the resources do not exist for them to be monitored live. They're used after the fact, and of course, ideally for some deterrence because they're posted that they're there. The next set of cameras that the uh, city put up in general were the ones around Courthouse Square, and those were funded as part of the Courthouse Square project probably five or six years ago. Those are the ones that most are, are most noticeable by the public. Uh, we have eight uh, fairly sophisticated um, high-resolution cameras in Courthouse Square. Uh, they're on, there's one on each corner of the square, and there's also one on each interior corner of the square, the middle of the square. At the same time, we also put up a, a fairly robust Wi-Fi network also um, in Courthouse Square as part of the Courthouse Square project. Those cameras and then Wi-Fi were completely funded by the Courthouse Square project, um, with the exception of two additional cameras that were put in that are pantone zooms that basically can be moved around and controlled by the police department. And the other cameras we have around the city are kind of sprinkled in just random areas. Um, there's not a large concentration of cameras anywhere else in the city. There are no cameras currently in Railroad Square or to my knowledge ever in uh, Railroad Square. Uh, those have been debated over the years, but they've, they've never happened. Um, the policy that we, we use for those cameras is that is that to get access to the cameras um, that responsibility lies with the department that oversees them. For example, the police department generally oversees the cameras in Courthouse Square, the transit department generally oversees the cameras in the parking garages, et cetera. And so when those department staff have a need to access the camera, they submit that authorization to the IT department and we provide permissions to view those cameras. Um, access to the images is, is internal staff only, a very limited number of people. Um, there also is a venue, of course, for public records uh, request to look at the video. That has happened uh, occasionally. Um, and that also typically goes to the department that oversees the camera. For example, it's not that uncommon in past years, particularly about two years ago, to get some requests for video camera surveillance in Courthouse Square. Those go to the police department. The police department confers with the city attorney's office, et cetera, and clips, if appropriate, are released. I believe the policy in general is that if it's if it's part of an ongoing investigation, then they uh, view it a little bit differently. So that's kind of an overview um, of the cameras. There's no policy of where the cameras can go. Uh, the the interpretation by our attorney's office a number of years ago, and it's still the case, is that if cameras are in the public right away. Um, they're fine to go there. Uh, we post that there are video surveillance cameras and there's no expectation of privacy uh, in the in the public um, public areas. So let me just pause there and ask if there are additional questions on specific aspects of the cameras. I can dive into that. Council Member Sawyer. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, so Eric, if there were <clears throat> If there was, if, there, if we still were noticing a trend in a particular area in our downtown, uh, who would be, the, I, perhaps it would be our police department, but the requesting department to say, look, we've got, we have a trend that, we're, that we are dealing with of, of um, illegal behavior in this, in, on this block or on this building. Would, would, is, would that be any, anywhere in the downtown area where it had to do with some illegal behavior, would that be a request that would come from, for instance, our downtown enforcement team? That would almost certainly uh, go through the police department and the okay. police department would make a determination on whether uh, they felt it was necessary to put some cameras up and then the request would go out to the information technology department. We would work with them on camera placement and camera angles. Um, 
for those cameras. Okay, so there looks, looks sounds like there might be some research that would need to be done to see if we do, if we do see a trend um, and then we could move from there. Yes, that's correct. Okay, that sounds good. Thanks, Eric. I was, I was hoping that there would be a, a policy like that or a, or a, a standard procedure uh, for responding to various needs as they, as they might arise. I appreciate that, thank you. And I, I don't have any questions at this time, Mr. McHenry, but thank you so much for joining us this morning. We appreciate it. It's been an ongoing discussion for us for quite some time. Um, I would like to turn to the public at this time to see if there's any public comments on this item. Uh, Madam Secretary, do we have anybody wishing to speak? We do not have any raised hands at this time for public comment. Okay. I'm gonna give it just one second. All right, bringing it back to uh, the subcommittee. Um, I guess I'll quickly make a comment and uh, John, if, if you have comments, uh, please jump in after me. But um, to me, this seems like a, a good tool and something worth pursuing uh, for downtown in this, these days of Martin v. Boise, where we don't have a lot of uh, abilities to, I guess, have tools for lack of a better term to uh, help the homelessness situation that we have in our downtown in the St. Rose neighborhood. Um, a lot of these areas where uh, unfortunately disruption can be uh, commonplace with people experiencing homelessness. Um, so I would like to see the city council get the opportunity to weigh in on this and potentially uh, explore cameras as a use. It's, it seems clear to me that the police department does have a use for it. It does help in the persecution of crimes such as break-ins uh, and other things that are going on that to me is really not related to being homeless. It probably has more to do with just flat out bad behavior that could be rooted in substance abuse or addiction and mental health. But the point being is, is if merchants and families are uh, exposed to that sort of thing on an ongoing basis and there's another tool that we have that can help get somebody uh, into services, which unfortunately all too often come when being incarcerated these days, uh, that's probably something that we should look into. That's my two cents, John. I don't know if you uh, have anything you'd like to add. Well, I, I agree with you, um, uh, Jack. And I, I think that maybe what, what we might be able to do is uh, recommend a, a, um, just to have a report item uh, on, on our camera usage and how we might, how we might enhance that uh, to help us with our um, security. In, in downtown, um, and then somehow you know, speak to the police department and, and the, do that do that research to find out if we if we actually have a trend. Um, if we don't have a trend, it's kind of hard to know how to place. So it's um, it would be you know it it would be helpful to have ultimately if we were to be, get a report item to have the the uh, the details on calls for service at a particular location where an added surveillance may um, help us either uh, deal with the perpetrators or, you know, word gets out um, in, in certain communities when, when, when the city acts. And um, so I think, I, think we have the, the, I think we have all the reasons necessary to at least bring the council up to speed on what our, what our policy or our procedures are for increasing uh, that kind of surveillance, albeit potentially temporary um, in a particular area downtown. Um, so I think, I, think I, 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 would, I would like to see that happen. I think you, uh, you know, I think it falls within your recommendation, Jack, is to, um, to talk, to, talk, to, uh, talk to the mayor and, or, or just bring it up um, as a report item on this, on this subcommittee that we would like to see something uh, happen with a conversation with the council about uh, camera surveillance. Okay, so just to be clear on the next steps that you're recommending, John, is you, you'd like me to speak to the mayor in my capacity as chair and see if you would prefer a report out from us on this, or if you would like, uh, for example, Raphael and uh, Mr. McHenry to create uh, I don't know, some sort of a study session. Yeah, I'm, I'm not sure if it needs to be a study session at this point, but, it, but at least a report item to, to get the ball rolling and get the, get, take the temperature of the council as far as um, their willingness to, to 
ask uh, because staff's going there's there's going to be some effort here uh, getting the police department to identify um, to potentially identify those trends. But however, however, that's best handled um, as far as getting it on the agenda, because um, our agendas are real are real full and this probably, although to some sounds like a um, urgency item. Um, you know, getting things on the agenda can take a while, but but at least we, giving the giving the council a heads up, and that might potentially come just um, either from Raphael or Eric or 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 you, Jack, uh, on a report item uh, or, or a report out um, on our discussion today uh, when it and, you know when it when it comes to reporting out on subcommittees. Okay, thanks for that, John. Appreciate it. Um, and, and with that, oh, uh, Mr. Rivero, did you have a question or a comment? You look like you were poised to make one. Uh, no, in regards to time frame, uh, what are we looking at a couple of weeks from now, from today, or a couple of months, perhaps, uh, given the uh, impacts of future agendas and such? Sure. Well, I'll bring it up with Chris um, today. We don't have a meeting today, to the best of my knowledge. Um, but uh, maybe on Tuesday, I can do a report out. And I, I'm going to assume that we'll seek, you know, four votes and go through that process, perhaps, or the mayor, after our conversation today, might just say, you know, I'm going to bring this forward. Um, given the some of the constitutionality issues and privacy, he may want to have it come forward with four votes. So it, there's already some semblance of council support for the consumption of staff time, but I'll leave that to him. That sounds good. Okay, great. Let's move on to, I think it's item 3.5. Yes, maintenance of Courthouse Square. Update from Tim Finnegan, Parks Crew Superintendent. Good morning, Council Chair Tibbetts and Council Member uh, Sawyer. Um, we've been uh, busy the last few weeks um, doing a lot of prep work to the square and the downtown surrounding areas in prep of the uh, Santa Rosa Marathon. Um, so we didn't schedule any big projects or any, any uh, major work. Um, our focus was on um, trying to do some fine tuning of areas, um, going through and doing some power washing of the square, um, painting over graffiti and weed mowing um, down the greenway and around uh, uh, City Hall and the City Hall Annex. So that's been our, our main focus the last few weeks. Um, it was a, a, a great event and so forth as far as um, the, uh, the Santa Rosa Marathon. Uh, we worked closely with the events coordinator on that and, and power needs and getting that all set up for them. Um, uh, we then kind of focused last week on, um, on Juilliard Park. Um, we had a, a car show event there um, this past weekend. And um, so we did it some, again, some fine tuning of the area, uh, getting that area prepared for the car show, which um, as far as all information I received was very successful. So it was great to have people around um, events back in the area being able to showcase some of our, our parks and uh, city spaces. Um, on the agenda coming up, I am looking at uh, uh, scheduling the, uh, the Bunya Bunya uh, cone removal. Um, I'm looking at the, uh, the week of the 20th or the week of the 27th, um, depending on availability of equipment. Um, and I, uh, I looked at the uh, schedule of events and that looks like it would work in between those two weeks. Um, but if there's anything that comes up that, uh, that uh, I need to be aware of um, or change something, please uh, let me know. Um, it's been great working with the organizations on event so uh, great communication um, so if there's anything else that comes up uh, please let me know and we'll adjust accordingly um, during our inspection of the greenway um, we will need to be spending some more time on the on the lights um, down alongside the pathway um, again we've had problems um, with some vandalism and um, and I will have to be uh, working with the electrical department on getting those lights back working again. Um, it seems like it's a constant thing. We, we spend a lot of time and energy 
uh, getting the lights going again, and um, we continue to have problems with uh, some power issues down there. So um, it's a work in progress, and it never seems to end. Um, that's all I have at the moment. I'm open for questions. Thank you, Mr. Pennington. Any questions? we're unable to hear you. Really, you can't hear me. Now I can. <laughs> okay, odd. Um, my computer's acting really strange. Uh, Councilmember Sawyer, do you have any questions? Nothing, Mr. Chair. Thank you. I don't either, Mr. Finnegan. I we appreciate your time. Um, at this time, we're going to turn to the public and see if there's any public comments on this item. Madam Secretary, are there any members of the public wishing to speak? We have no public comment at this time. Okay, great. Bringing it back. Uh, thanks so much, Tim. Um, we're going to move on to our last uh, item of the day, which is item 3.6, permitted events and public art. And I have an update here that Mr. Rivero is going to be providing that update. Uh, yes, uh, thank you so much, Chair Tibbetts, and uh, stepping in for Tara Thompson, who's not able to join us this morning. So uh, under events, uh, there have been continuous activities uh, downtown uh, center in Courthouse Square under the permit issue um, to the uh, Metro Chamber, to the Metro Chamber uh, for open and out. A few events have returned to downtown this year. But we have not, um, but we're not back up to our uh, typical volume. Uh, so far, the uh, Mexican Oaxacan uh, event uh, or the Oaxaca in the wine country took place on August 1st. It was very festive, very beautiful, colorful. It brought a lot of people to downtown, of course. Uh, and then we also had a very successful Santa Rosa Marathon just recently. I think uh, we saw a couple of staff members uh, crossing the, the line, including Captain Cregan and uh, the mayor also, I believe, uh, participated. So that took place on August 28th and August 29th. Uh, winter blast in the uh, SOFA district is planned for uh, November 6th. And then our uh, the Outfest uh, wine festival scheduled typically in October has been postponed to 2022. Uh, and then, of course, as we start to get more applications, uh, we will resume dis distributing um, the uh, 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 permit list uh, uh, as we continue uh, moving forward. Uh, under public arts, uh, no major updates uh, uh, from the previous, uh, from the last meeting <coughs> we held. However, there are two items, uh, October 1st, uh, sorry, October 4th, uh, we expect to recommend the final artist for the fifth street parking garage project uh, to the APPC for approval. And also on the same day, uh, we expect to make a recommendation, a final recommendation um, uh, uh, for the list of words and phrases and languages uh, for the Onum uh, uh, sculpture uh, to the APPC for approval as well. So that is all we have under public arts and events. Uh, are there any questions? Thanks, Mr. Rivera. Nope. Seeing, seeing none from John, I have none. Um, so we'll turn to public comment on item 3.6. Any members of the public wishing to speak? We have no public comment at this time. Okay, bringing it back to the subcommittee. Uh, not seeing any final comments, but uh, thank you very much, Mr. Rivera. Appreciate you. You're welcome. And uh, so that was our last item of the day. So it's 9.38. We are adjourned. Thank you. Goodbye.